Hello and welcome to Talk TV. I'm your host, Doug Brendel. Tonight we have a return visit from Frank Carboni. He's running for Nye County Commissioner in District 2. So with no further ado, let's meet Frank again. Frank, how you doing tonight? I'm doing great. Glad, I'm glad to have me back. Uh, I appreciate you guys having me on the show and it's gives me a chance to talk to the folks out there. Yeah, well, we're glad to have you back, Frank. So, uh, you know, for those who didn't see the uh, first episode that we had, uh, just give us a brief background on your life and uh, professional experience that's led you to this point. Sure, sure. I'm a 62-year-old, um, was born in Brooklyn. I grew up with uh, a family of two, a brother and a sister, and my mom and dad. I started working when I was around 15 years old. Uh, some of you folks might have heard this story before. I was on a, out on the highway waving to p people in a tiger suit, telling them to go to this gas station because uh, we want to put a tiger in your tank, which I is that. SO gasoline. <laughs> okay, so there was a. Uh, I, I've done a lot of things between that time and my last job, which was working for Northrop Grumman for 30 years. I spent 30 years with the company. That's where I got my vast experience. Some of my experiences started a little bit earlier in, in, in some of the other companies, but this is where they got honed and I actually got some certifications that, that actually said I could really do the things that my paperwork said I could do, which is you know tooling, tool engineering, manufacturing engineering, planning, scheduling, uh, logistics, and program management. So that kind of sums some of it up. Then there's contracts, management, business management, as well as some material background, which is a lot of purchasing stuff. So it's kind of a rounded education going through Northrop Grumman. So my last duty station was at uh, Tinker Air Force Base. Um, spent uh, three years there setting up the, uh, the SPO, which is a special project office for the B-2 bomber at, uh, w that was being fielded at Whiteman Air Force Base, the 509th. Mm -hmm. And then I retired <coughs> early at 55, which was I figured it was time for me to get out and do some things on my own, do the things I want to do, like building my cars. I actually built a, a chopper bike for my, my brother-in-law. So just the things I like to do, things with my hands, get out there and work, and, you know, work with my, the folks in the neighborhood. So that kind of rounds up where I'm at. And I've got uh, a son and uh, two grandsons here. Great. Uh, how long have you been in the Pahrump area? It's going on eight years. Yeah. And has the desire to run for public office been kind of a <laughs> slow thing that uh, you look at things and say, how come they are, how come they aren't, and you just say, maybe it's up to Exactly, me. exactly. That's one of the reasons why I'm running. I mean, I've seen th some things that are kind of like, why are we doing that? You know, why do we have these issues? You know, why do we have issues with people overrunning the budgets? Why do we have issues with, you know, some of the other things that are going on in the county? And with the town, and a lot of it has to do with communication between people. And uh, again, my biggest piece is to try to bring people together, a team, a team builder. So a lot of things we did, and a lot of things I had to do when I worked for Northrop, because you're dealing with a lot of other companies, dealing with suppliers, subcontractors. You know, we dealt with Boeing, Vought. You know, a lot of the big companies. You know, Hewlett Packard. You can go on and on and on. So you have to learn how to deal with those folks, as well as the uh, as well as the government folks, and. Some of those folks are, you know, they're tough to deal with, so you have to be very precise and you have to have the information and you need to go specifically understand what they want and you need to respond specifically what they need. Hmm. And you have to be a big enough person to be able to say, I don't understand, let's not go any further. I want to, I want to make sure I see this clearly, understand Exa it, and then I'll move on with you. Exactly. A uh, lot of times our politicians don't do that. Exactly. I mean, <laughs> well, to say, okay, sounds pretty good, let's go. <laughs> I, we've learned how to do things from an electronic standpoint, too. Uh, a lot of the negotiations that we did with some of the contracts we, we worked on were through video conferencing. I mean, we didn't have a lot of travel and you know travel money to just go spend to go fly to Washington or fly to, to Tinker or fly to... Uh, uh, Texas or wherever we had to go so we used a lot of communications through video conferencing and then when we started to nail down the contract that's when we did the eye, you know eyeball to eyeball kind of communication to actually get the signing of of the contracts so I'm familiar with doing a lot of things through visual communication great well I'll tell you what we're gonna take a real short break here and when we come back we're going to get into some of the particulars of uh, how you feel about running for commissioner and what you think the responsibilities are. So folks, don't go anywhere. We're gonna be right back in about two minutes. Mm -hmm. 
And welcome back. Well, let's continue our conversation with candidate Frank Carboni, who's running for Nye County Commissioner in District 2. So, Frank, uh, I'd like to get into what the core responsibilities are of a commissioner. Well, there's, there's several. There's several things that they're responsible for. Obviously, they're, you know, they're, they're civil service. They're a, they need to take care of the people. That's, the, that's their biggest and most important one, take care of the people. But within that, you have policies and procedures that need to go out. So, you know, ordinances and laws, that's their job as a, as a body of, of legal people, of, of uh, governors. They make sure that all the laws are put on the books that run our county. Uh, there's things in budgeting. That's a, one of their biggest is budgeting. They need to make sure that whatever comes in goes out and all the people that are spending their money is spending it properly and not overrunning. You know, that's in conjunction with the treasurers, the comptrollers, and so on and so forth. You know, the county manager, the te uh, county manager, and so on. So there's a lot of things that are involved with that. There's planning, zoning. There's uh, trans transportation, if we have transportation here. Right now, we probably don't see very much transportation. A lot of that's handled in Pahrump, mainly by the, the town. You have communications. Communications is a big thing. That's communications with the police department, the EMSs, the fire departments, so on and so forth throughout the county, which is another big issue that came up during one of the meetings we just had. And it looks like we're going to end up spending a lot of money to update our communication systems, hmm. which for some reason or other the commissioners weren't really aware of, which is, again, a core responsibility is the communication systems. Where are they at? Uh, parking, uh, records, and, and deeds. Uh, government administration, which is the people who work within th within the government, you know they need to make sure that they're taken care of properly. But that mainly gets done through the uh, the county manager. But again, the commissioners are responsible for that. Uh, property tax assessments for the county, you get the town that does their does one as far as well as, as they do. And you have uh, law enforcement, which is the budgeting for law enforcement. Uh, the judicial system, I mean, the administration over the, the courthouses and so on, that's all done by the, owned by the commissioners. And uh, p poor relief welfare, that's something that trickles down from the state to the counties. And then on roads and bridges, the maintenance of that, you know, obviously we have all the roads in, in the county or county roads. The town doesn't have responsibility over roads. A lot of people make that mistake where they think that the roads in their neighborhood are owned by the town, which are not, they're the county. And the, right now, the county commissioner that's over that is uh, Dan Schenhofen. And, uh, and uh, uh, Dave uh, Faring, I believe, is the person that works for all, for all the roads and, and those type of items. And then you got recreation areas, parks, and so on. And then also, which are, which are specific to the county and not for the town. Right. Because the town has their own as well. Every time I hear parks, I think yeah. town. It's right. one right. of the few things but, they do. But the, but the county, county is big. So you county, there's, there's things within the county that are being controlled by the county as okay. far as parks and recreation. And animal control. Animal control is controlled by. So it's those are. agenda at every meeting. Th yeah. Those are the very, very specific things or the, you know, the real core responsibilities of the commissioners. Obviously, there's a lot of other things the commissioners are doing besides that. Which, you know, in some cases sometimes takes away from their core responsibilities. I mean, when, when you go to all these other meetings that you're tied to, that takes away from all, the, all those other things that you need to be going to, and which are specifically those core responsibilities. So going into being a commissioner, I want to pay attention to the core responsibilities. And if that means I can't go to some of these other things, I have to, I have to pay, make the people understand that. And again, one of the other pieces, again, communication, not only the communication through radio, but communication through people. I mean, we need to make sure that we communicate to our town, our, 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 the rest of the folks that are in our community, and, and throughout the, uh, the rest of the county. We have to all work together as a team or else we can't get things done. That's the only way we're going to get business in here. It's the only way we're going to grow our economy. That's the only way we're going to take care of all these ho houses that are uh, vacant and in foreclosure is working together banks, realtors, mortgage companies to help us do things. So it covers so many different things and to get deep down into probably backup material and all that, you must, uh, your mind must be geared that way. You must be that kind of person. I think, I think you have to be born that <laughs> you have way. have to be, well, again, uh, it, it, or you, I have a predisposition in some way to get into the minute details and say, I'm you, not, I'm you, not moving on from here until. Right. I understand I, what that is, right? Right. Yep. And that's, so. again, that's what contracts are about. When, you're, when you've got an RFP in front of you, you've got to understand what the request is, so you have to go through that properly. You need to know what the contract is. When people go out to do bids, 
based on what you tell them they want you want them to do you need to make sure it's very specific and it has all the bells and whistles included into it which in some cases some of these contractors may not like because I may make the contract very very specific and they're gonna have to follow within those guidelines of that of those contracts you know yeah. what I'm I, I don't want to sound like a cheerleader but I just see these uh, contractors from say Vegas coming in here and they negotiate and I, I said to one of my friends I said you know what those guys could come in and negotiate contracts for NFL teams there you go and they put on a pair of blue jeans and a blazer and look I'm all uh, aw shucks <laughs> when it comes down to it man they are playing hardball we have to be the same way and exactly. I don't think we are exactly we, they, they say oh my gosh we got to build a park if we're gonna put uh, we got to do this we got to. oh you're killing us I thought you wanted some homes <laughs> and we got to say well you know what we don't want them that bad if you're not gonna do it right then take your there, business there, elsewhere there, there's the door it's hardball negotiating with those exactly. guys exactly you're gonna do that absolutely outstanding <laughs> absolutely and, and my in, in my contract requirements is gonna be very tough so good we, we may be getting we, we may not get all the this is the part that's going to be terrible is we may not always get the person who works here to go do the work because our contracts may be too stiff for them to do their job. So we need to work again. That's working together with that contractor to make make it work. Right. But not make the contract weak. The right. contract has to have teeth. Exactly. I like the sounds of that because I really feel like some of those guys wrap up their deal with us and on the ride back to vegas they're just laughing their head off they say i can't believe they gave in on that exactly we were willing to give this and that and oh my gosh look at the bonus <laughs> we got so exactly yeah it, it the negotiations with those guys we gotta we gotta get tough because yeah, absolutely. they're not gonna give us anything that's it, true in my humble opinion that's true that's true <laughs> very true well i'll tell you what let's take a short break right here at this point and uh before the cameras started rolling, we were talking about things uh, for the kids and yes. getting the parents involved, so yes. I'd really like to go into detail on that. Sure. So, folks, we're going to go away for probably about two, two and a half minutes, and when we come back, we're going to hear some more from Frank, and we'll be right back. 